people all over this world. Yeah, people all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus. Hello, my friend, it's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of It's a Word Thing. God, we're so honored and so blessed to be here today to worship you, to study the Word of God together. God, now give us deep revelation and deep understanding of the Word of God today. We need your wisdom, knowledge, and your understanding, God, if we're gonna be effective in this lost and dying world today. So I pray for those, Father, who are listening today. Give them ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I thank you for the anointing that's upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. All glory belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, friends. <clears throat> We've been dealing with the subject for some time now, doing it in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Doing it in the Spirit. And we've been talking about how it is that we get into the place to where we can do things in the spirit. And we talked about how God has used his son, Jesus Christ, to get us back in the spirit so that we can do things in the spirit. Because those of us who worship him, friends, must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so the last time we were together, we were dealing with the issue of at what extent we have believed. And so when the, when the eunuch asked Philip what hindered him to be baptized, he said that you would believe, watch friend, with your whole heart, that you would believe with your whole heart that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And so it's at the, it's at the extent of my believing that determines whether or not I'm I should be baptized, whether it be with water or, or the Holy Spirit. Because those of us who are Christians, only those of us who, who believe unto the saving of the soul uh, should be baptized in water. And at the, at the moment that I'm, uh, I've sincerely given my life to Christ, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes at the point of our believing to the saving of the soul. And as Jesus began to depart, friends, as Jesus began to depart to go to the cross, he begins to make an announcement about the coming of the person of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I need for you to pray for him. I'm feeling real good right now. I'm feeling real good in my spirit right now, family. Listen, as he's departing, doing it in the spirit, friend, this is good stuff to me. It is really ministering to me. Uh, as Jesus is getting ready to depart, he begins to talk to them about the Holy Spirit the coming of the person of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus comes, he will baptize you in the person of the Holy Spirit. He will baptize you with, Holy, with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so let's take a look because the only thing that hinders is the extent of my believing. The only thing, friend, that keeps us from being baptized in the Holy Spirit or being baptized, period, friend, would be whether or not I've believed unto the saving of the soul. So I want to take a look at, I want to take us to where God has led us up to this point. Watch this. Up to this point. Uh, let, let me say this. Let me say this because I, I pin little things and I want to make sure that I stay in the vein with the Holy Spirit because there's things that I need to say to you. Okay. And so I'm going to read what I put right here. It says, as Jesus was preparing to make his departure, he began to talk about the coming of the person of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because his disciples believed. He began to talk to them about the coming of the Holy Spirit because his disciples believed. The only thing that keeps the Holy Spirit from coming, me being baptized with the Holy Ghost, is where I have believed. We looked at the seed of the sower, friend, the parable of the seed of the sower, and everybody believed, but everybody don't believe unto the saving of the soul. Glory to God. We, we believe at different stages, but we don't all believe to the saving of the soul. But because the disciples believed, Jesus began to talk about the coming of the Holy Spirit. In um, John chapter 17 is where we want to be. In John chapter 17, let's take a look at verses 1 through 4 
uh, for as, as we begin. Let's take a look at verses one through four. Listen what it says. These words Jesus spake, lifting up his eyes to heaven and saying, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, not some friend, over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they, may, that they might know thee the only true, I'm sorry, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. Watch, friend. Verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou had gave me to do. You see that, friend? He said, I finished the work that you have gave me to do. Jesus is on his way to the cross. He's talking to the Father about departing the area now. Why? Because he's finished, glory to God, because he's finished his work. His work, his work, friend, was to get us back in the spirit. His work was to get us back in the spirit. He said, I finished that work. Watch this. What hinders me to be baptized is the extent of my believing. It's where I have come to the believing. Have I believed to the saving of the soul? And so he says, he says um, he's getting ready to depart. He's talking to his, his father about leaving the earth realm and going back to sit at the right hand of the father where he was before the earth was. But he's talking about this, friend, because He's finished his work. His work was to get them to believe in the true God and that he was the Christ that the Father have sent. Doing it in the spirit. Watch now, friend. Now, uh, Jesus, Jesus talked to the Father about sending the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost. Jesus talks to the Father about sending the Comforter, who's the Holy Ghost. Why is he talking, friend, about sending the Comforter, who's the Holy Ghost? Because they have believed to the saving of the soul. When Jesus comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And so now that they have believed to the saving of the soul, Jesus can leave. He then started the church, friend. He's got the people, the ones that God has sent him to speak to, to get them back in the spirit. The church has to start somewhere. And this is the starting of the church. The church didn't begin in Acts, friend. It didn't begin in the book of Acts. The church began when Jesus was born in the earth. The church began, the new church began when Jesus was born in the earth. And there were people who went to church, really went to church for the very first time, friend, after Jesus was born. The shepherds that were out there watching over their sheep. When Jesus was born in the earth, the angel Gabriel came and told them, the angel of the Lord came and told them that this wonderful thing had happened. They say, let's go see. For the first time, they were going to church because for the first time, man can look up on the face of God and live. Glory to God. Man can actually be in the presence of a holy and a mighty God. Hallelujah. And so the Magi went to church for the very first time because, friend, listen, back in the day, everybody couldn't go to, go to church and participate. They could go to the church. They could go to the temple, watch this, and offer up sacrifices for their atonements, but they couldn't participate in the, in the ongoings and the service of the church. There were only people set aside to do that. So the, the shepherds got a chance to go to church for the first time. The magi got a chance to really go to church for the first time and participate, friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so let's take a look because now all of a sudden man can look up on a holy God and live now. But he talked about, he talks to the Father about sending the Holy Ghost, about sending the comforter who is the person of the Holy Spirit. So let's take a look at this over in John chapter 14. We're very familiar with it. We're doing it in the spirit, but we have to get there first, friends, before we can do anything in the spirit. We have to get to that place. And so in John chapter 14, let's look at verse number 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, the, the I'm sorry, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about, watch this, he's this, he, I don't want to get ahead of myself, this is good though, he's talking about the Holy Spirit coming now. Why, friend? Because they have believed to the saving of the soul. Let's look over here, let's look over here. Because in John chapter 16, verse number 7, Jesus says that he's departing. 
So let's go over here. I'm, let's look at John chapter 15 first, though. John chapter 15, because there's some stuff in here that Jesus says in John chapter 15 that we need to take a look at verse 26 and 27. Because Jesus is departing, friend, but he's talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit now. Watch now, verse 26 in John 15. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. You see, friend, he's saying uh, the Holy Spirit is going to come, and you're going to bear witness to him because you know me. Watch this, friend. Those of us who believe to the saving of the soul will welcome the person of the Holy Ghost and we will recognize him because we know Jesus. And when he comes, he's not coming to build a platform for himself. He's coming to give us, watch this, he's coming to give us that which he's gotten from the Father. Jesus said when he came, he said, I didn't come here to teach or to preach my own gospel or my own message. I only came to do what the Father has sent me to do. I only say what the Father has told me to say. I only do what I've been taught by the Father. And so the Holy Spirit is the, has the same character of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's easy to be received of those of us who have believed to the saving of the soul. What hinders me to be baptized? Hallelujah. It's where I have come. It's the extent of my believing, friend. That's the only thing that'll keep me is, is where I have come to my believing. Let's look at John 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. And listen, friend, to what's penned in the gospel. Verse 13 through 15, look what it says. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Why am I talking about this? Why are we talking about this? Why is the Holy Spirit having me to talk about this very thing right now, friend? Because Jesus is departing. Jesus is departing, and so the Holy Spirit has to come. Who is it that's going to bring the Holy Spirit? How do we get back into the Spirit? It starts with Jesus. And Jesus says, watch now, I'm going to talk to the Father so that he can send that Holy Spirit. Man, I don't, I don't. Okay, but the Holy Spirit is leading me here. Listen, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, watch this. The baptism at the Jordan when John was talking to Jesus and Jesus and John is talking about being baptized at the Jordan and John was saying, there's one that cometh who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, the Holy Ghost and fire. On the day of Pentecost, that's the same baptism. That is the, that's not another baptism, a new baptism, friend. That's the same baptism that was talked about at the Jordan. I'm going to prove it to you. It's the same baptism. Watch now. Look at uh, verse 14 in John 16. He shall glorify me, for he receive it of mine and shall show it unto you. You see, friend, the reason we're going to be able to receive the Holy Spirit, those of us who have believed to the saving of the soul, is because we are familiar with Jesus. When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Me and the Father are one. Well, guess what? Him, the Father, and the Holy Ghost is one. Verse 15, all things that the Father have are mine. Therefore, shall, therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you and shall show it unto you. Jesus is talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit now, friend, because they have believed to the saving of the soul. Jesus, glory to God. Jesus couldn't go back to the Father, friend, and talk to the Father about sending the comforter or the Holy Spirit if no one had received him. First, you have to receive him first. So now that there are somebody, a group of people who have received him, those who he have went and selected, they believe. Whom do they say that I, the son of man, am? Well, some say you're a prophet. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist. He said, okay, well, well, some say you're just a prophet. He said, okay, so whom do you say that I am? And Peter responds because he gets a revelation from heaven. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. So he believed to the saving of the soul, friend. He didn't believe to the saving of the soul. And because that's happened, now Jesus can talk to the father about the coming of the person of the Holy Ghost because his work is finished. Watch this, friends. Watch this. In John chapter 16, uh, John chapter 16, verse number seven, 
Jesus says that he has to depart so that the Holy Ghost can come. He has to depart so that the Holy Ghost can come. Just like John the Baptist made way for Jesus, Jesus had to come and make way for the Holy Ghost. John stepped on the scene. Pray for me, friend, if you can. John steps on the scene, and his purpose for being on the scene is to begin to talk about the coming of the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah that's coming. Well, when Jesus comes up on the scene, he's got to do the same thing for the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. He's got to do the same thing for the Holy Ghost. So that we are, watch this, so that we are uh, acquainted, familiar with this person called the Holy Ghost. In the book of Acts, they ask the question of some disciples. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we, we know nothing of the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying, friend? Somebody has to come up on the scene and begin to talk about, make the announcement about this person of the Holy Ghost. And there are people, there are people right now, it's a sad thing to say, friend, but there are people right now who are Christians but don't know anything about the Holy Ghost because either they're leaders Either their leaders are unlearned or don't believe in the Holy Ghost. There are some sincere people, friends, they got the Holy Ghost, but they don't even know about it because certain people are not teaching or talking about it. You can't, you can't operate in something that you know nothing about. Nothing about. You can't, if I didn't know something about the Word of God and who God is, I could not be a witness for God. I could not be a witness to something that I have not seen or heard. That's what the disciples said. We can only talk about what we have seen, glory to God, and heard. So in John 16 and verse number 7, John 16 and verse number 7, listen to what's penned. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. This is Jesus talking, that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Watch this, friend. This is important. This is important. Jesus is talking about sending the Holy Spirit. I, I, I know I might get in trouble, and I know a lot of people are not going not, not gonna to agree with me on this, but I'm reading Scripture right now. I'm reading the Bible, and you hear the Scripture. I need for you to have your Bible in front of you and read what I'm reading and see what I'm reading. Notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am sending the Holy Ghost to you. Why is that important, friend? Because there's too many people struggling trying to get the Holy Ghost. You don't have to struggle to get the Holy Ghost. You don't have to fight to get the Holy Ghost, friend. Jesus said, I am going to send him to you. I'm going to send him to you. And all of us who have believed to the saving of the soul, we don't have to pine after, we don't have to, we don't have to tarry all day and all night, friend. We don't have to do that for the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I am going to send him to you. Glory to God. I'm, I'm in the Bible, friend. I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here in the Bible, friend. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. If I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. He will not come unto you. Watch now. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He said, I will send him unto you. God sent his son to us, friend. Watch this. God sent us his son. The son came, but I still have to receive him when he comes. So Jesus is talking to us about receiving the Holy Ghost when he comes. He's talking to his people, friend, about receiving the Holy Ghost when the Holy Ghost comes. I'm going to send him, but I need you to receive him. Okay, well, I got to know something about him before I can, I got to know something about him in order to receive him, friend. If I don't know... If I don't know someone is coming to my house, how can I receive or prepare to receive someone that I don't know that's arriving? If somebody is coming in uh, at the airport, friend, and somebody want me to go in and receive that person, pick that person up from the airport, they're going to have to make an announcement. They're going to have to tell me, friend, that the person is arriving in the airport at a certain time. They're going to have to tell me that, friend, so that I can be there to pick so I can be there to pick the person up or to receive the person. I hope you're praying for me those of you who can. Are you following what God is saying? Doing things in the spirit. We are we're making this too hard. We're making it too difficult 
for people. Paul said, I don't come to you with the excellence of speech. I come to you with the sincere milk of the word. We making it too hard for people to, to be involved with the Holy Ghost. We making it too hard for people to receive something that God has sent to them. It's freely given to your friend. It's not something that we have to work at. We got to labor for the, that's, that's, that's not, that's not what the Bible tells us, friend. We're talking about doing it in the spirit. Can't do anything in the spirit until I get you in the right spirit, Tell God get us in the right spirit, and he used his son Jesus Christ to do that. Watch this now. Let's look at verse 13. We're still in John 16. Let's look at verse, okay, we have already discussed that already, but let's read it again because it's worth seeing again. It's worth seeing again. Watch now, John 16, 13 through 15. Let's do it again. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Jesus said he's going to glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and, and shall show it unto you. Wow, wow. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit just dropped in my spirit just now, friend. The way people are teaching about the Holy Spirit is not glorifying God, it's glorifying them. Oh, wow, man. See, when we do this right in the Spirit, it glorifies God. But when we don't do it right, friend, it glorifies the other person, the person that's trying to make us work for things that's been freely given. It's, it was just dropped in my spirit, friend, as I was reading it. He said, there are too many people getting the glory for folks who are operating in spiritual gifts. They giving the glory to them. I'm not getting any glory because I didn't unction that. It didn't come from me. So there are things that people are doing and operating in, they are getting the glory. That's why we hear a lot of things, friend. Listen, please, please hear my heart right now. We hear a lot of people say things like, Bishop this and Bishop that and Bishop this and Bishop said this and Bishop this. God don't get any glory out of that, friend. And I teach my congregation all the time, listen, stop running around talking about what Bishop said because I only said what the Holy Spirit gave me to say to you. So if you're going to use my name at all, please use it at the end of that. Say the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke a powerful word through our Bishop this Sunday. And this is what the Holy Spirit said, not what Bishop said. And so he said, I'm not getting any glory out of these, these, these so-called spiritual gifts that folks are operating in. Other people are getting it. Boy, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Verse 15, all things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. This is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, making the announcement that the Holy Spirit is coming, but he's got to go so the Holy Spirit can come. Why, friends? So that there's no confusion so that there's no confusion, because they are God. Both he's God and the Holy Spirit is God. And God is not a freak. God do everything, watch this here, he do everything decently in order. When Jesus is speaking, God is silent. And when God is speaking, Jesus is silent. Why, friend? Because they are one and the same. If they are both speaking together, if they're both speaking together, friend, then that's saying they are separate people. As a father, as a husband, and as a son, right? If I'm speaking to my mother, I'm speaking to her as, as a son. Or I'm speaking to my wife, I'm speaking to my wife as a husband. I'm speaking to my children, I'm speaking to my children as a father. The husband don't speak to the children while, I'm, while, the, while the father is speaking to the children. Y'all walking with me. The husband and the father don't speak at the same time. When I'm a father, I speak to my children. When I'm a husband, I'm speaking to my wife. When I'm a son, I'm speaking to, it's going to be all right, family. It's going to be all right. Jesus said that he has to depart so that the Holy Ghost can come. And in John chapter 17, John chapter 17, let's look at verses 5 through 8 and listen to what's said in John chapter 17 because we're saying Jesus can leave and the Holy Ghost can come because they have believed to the saving of the soul. Verse 5 through eight, listen to what it says in John 17. And now, now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, watch this, with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Watch, family. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Listen, friend, how important this is. Thine they were, 
and thou gave them me, and they have kept thy word. Watch now, verse 7. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the word which thou gave me, and they have received them. Listen, friend, and they have received them and have known surely that I came from thee. You see how important this is, friend? Because now we're talking about they have believed to the saving of the soul. He said, listen, they, watch now, and have now known surely that I have come from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. You see that, friend? And they have believed. So Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit coming. Why? Because they have believed to the saving of the soul. They are sure, friend. They are sure. You see what I'm saying? There's no doubt in their mind. They are sure. What hinders us to be baptized? What hinders us to be baptized in the Spirit or to receive the Holy Spirit? It's the, it's the extent of my believing, friend. And so Jesus is talking about departing and having the Holy Spirit to come now because they have believed to the saving of the soul. He said they are sure. It's no doubt in their mind who he is and that God has sent him, friend, to do the work that he's been sent to do. He said they have received the word. So guess what, friend? If they have received the word, they've received the God of the word. If they have received the word, they have received the God who sent him and they have received him. In order to receive the, the word of God, you have to receive the God of the word as well. You can't receive just one and not the other because the words that he speaks, they are spirit and life. They are part of him. The word and the God of the word are synonymous one with another. They are. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, friend. They believe to the saving of the soul. So now Jesus is talking to them about the Holy Spirit coming. Friend, I hope, you, I hope you're really following this. I hope you're enjoying the teaching because it's important that the church get back into the spirit. But we have to teach the right, we have to teach it right, friends, so that people can receive what the Holy Spirit is saying. We can't keep making this difficult for people to understand, friend. We got to make this, we got to present this in a way that people can receive it and understand it, friend. Wow, I, I, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you sharing your day with me, friends, sharing your day with me. I hope you join me back here uh, on our next broadcast. We're going to continue to deal with doing it in the spirit. It's important that we get there, friend, because that's our happy place. That's the place that where we succeed. That's the place that we are, where we are victorious at. It's the happy place, doing it in the spirit. Hey, friend, it's been good and it's been fun. And I look forward to seeing you on the next broadcast, friend. I look so forward to seeing you on the next broadcast. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you is my sincere prayer, friend, for you. Hallelujah. Until we meet again, friend, meet me right here same time next week. All right? God bless you, my friend. Love you to life. God bless you. People all over this world, yeah. People all over this world say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus.